PS versus AI versus ID. In other words, Adobe Photoshop versus Adobe Illustrator versus Adobe InDesign. These are the three heavyweights of the Adobe Creative Suite, especially with regard to print media. Now, in going to various businesses and conducting various training courses, I often get asked, which one of these do I need? And what do I use for what part of the printing process? Well, people have many misconceptions about this. Some will say, well, you know what? You need Adobe Photoshop for absolutely everything, and that's what they do. Some people believe that Adobe Illustrator, that's the answer. That's the one that's going to let your creative juices flow and use that for everything, maybe even for laying out of a page. And some people aren't really sure as to what role Adobe InDesign plays. So in preparing this explanation, I thought the best way to describe what each three of these applications do is by means of an illustration. Okay, all right, now I'm just gonna take this shot here. Absolutely fantastic, great, ex oh dear. Afterwards, I, I, I've come back and I've just noticed that there's pimples on the skin, there's those dots, there's these imperfections in a photograph. I need to get them removed. That's the job of Photoshop. You've got plenty of tools. There's the, the healing brush tool, there's the clone stamp tool. There's different tools to remove and clean up your pictures. You can use levels, you can use curves to make sure that your pictures are all absolutely perfect. You can crop your pictures as well. Getting rid of cracks in old photographs. The picture is underexposed or overexposed. I need to adjust it. The saturation levels, changing the person's eye color. Now it's very powerful in some respects, but one of the things you shouldn't be doing in Photoshop is writing text, especially if you're going to use it for print. Sometimes with Adobe Photoshop that you're looking at a graphic that you should be pixel sharp, like a big bit of text or a cartoon graphic or a conceptual graphic, like just a big square in a circle. It should be sharp. And you look at it and you're thinking, uh, yeah, it just looks a tiny bit fuzzy because you are using the wrong tool for the job. You're basically using a screwdriver to hammer in a nail. I don't know if I've got a screwdriver around here. Now the problem is with somebody who uses Adobe Photoshop for everything is that they make the quality of the photo bigger and bigger and bigger and then their computer crashes. Now why is that? Well, if you just look here, if you zoom very, very, very close into a graphic on Photoshop, you'll notice it's made up of little dots. These dots are known as pixels. It's known as, or this is known as a rasterized graphic. So the problem here with Photoshop is the more pixels you have, the sharper the picture, but the bigger the file size. So bearing that in mind, anything to do with illustrations, like drawing, anything to do with text even, you should stay away from Adobe Photoshop. You need to go to Adobe Photoshop's friend, Mr. Adobe Illustrator. Stop, hold that position, hold that pose. Don't move. I've just started to draw you on this. Oh, absolutely perfect. I just want to get you pixel perfect here. And here's the point with Adobe Illustrator. It allows you to draw vector-based graphics, whereas Photoshop will give you amazing tools with photographs. Illustrator allows you to draw yourself. So if you have a graphics tablet, hopefully a graphics ta tablet a little better than a piece of cardboard, and you're able to draw uh, and have that skill, then Adobe Illustrator's for you. There's plenty of tools to aid you with your drawing as well, like the perspective tool. There's brush tools, like pattern brush tools and cal calligraphic brush tools. There's symbols and sprayer tools. You can create snowflakes and rose petals. Absolutely fantastic. And you can have the confidence that whatever you draw, no matter how small, like the size of a postage stamp, to no matter how large, even the side of a bus, your graphics and your logos will be pixel perfect. And speaking of logos, Illustrator is the tool that you want to use to draw your company logo. And in that way, you can make sure that your company logo will appear on your website as sharp as it need be in a JPEG or a PNG format. But more importantly, you can import this into InDesign or another a desktop publishing program, or basically onto straight, you can print it straight from Adobe Illustrator and be sure that your graphic 
is sharp. No matter how far that you zoom in, if you, as you're looking, hopefully I'll be showing you this illustration, but no matter how far close that you zoom in here, that your graphic will be sharp. So Adobe Illustrator. The trouble is, people often use Adobe Illustrator for absolutely everything. That includes the laying out of a page. And they really shouldn't, because that's the domain of Adobe InDesign. So now that you have taken your photos and you have designed your logo, you would need to bring it into Adobe InDesign. It's now time to put them together, lay them out on a page, measure up exactly what type of page that you're going to be making, the size of the document, where your images are going to go. So with Adobe InDesign, you can lay out your page. You can bring in Adobe Illustrator graphics with the confidence that it will not pixelate. You can also bring in Adobe Photoshop graphics, keeping them in the Adobe PSD fight format, mind you, so that you're able to have full flexibility over them. And you can create books, you can create brochures as well. But one of the important things you need to remember with Adobe InDesign is the inclusion of text, is the writing of text. So this is where you write your copy. This is where you write your story. Adobe InDesign has fantastic tools within it, like styles, paragraph styles. There's different character styles as well to aid consistency throughout your document. All of your page numbering, your chapter headings, the table of contents, the, the indexes, the cross-references, all of this can be included in Adobe InDesign. One of the things you need to remember about Adobe InDesign is that all of the graphics, all of the fonts are linked into the InDesign document you need to remember to export it in an appropriate format so that you can print it professionally. So there you have it, Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Illustrator, Adobe InDesign, PS versus AI versus ID. You really want to be using all three of them to get the best creative experience. But you know what, if you had to drop one of them, if you could only afford two, then I would suggest that if you're in business, then drop Adobe Illustrator. There are some fantastic tools that come with Adobe Illustrator, especially if you're designing, etc. But if you just want to get brochures and flyers and, and information out, there are many tools in Adobe InDesign that will recreate the ones in Adobe Illustrator. There's not as many, but there are, it will, it will do, it will do the job. If you could only afford one of them. Now, you might be surprised at this, but I would recommend that you go for Adobe InDesign. And the reason being is that you've got all those tools in InDesign to lay out the page, etc., which is great, put page numbers in, tables of contents. But also you have the facility of making these basic conceptual graphics as well, along with company logos that you can share. You can create a logo in InDesign and then link that logo to other InDesign files. But with Adobe Photoshop, you're basically not going to be using all of the wonderful features that come with it. It's sort of like having a f powerful Ferrari and just driving around the streets of Knightsbridge. So, uh, oh, one other thing as well with Adobe Photoshop uh, is that there are many other alternatives that are free. Windows comes with a basic photo editor and pretty much does the job. It's not going to have all of the power of Photoshop and all those special effects of Photoshop and all of those effects with cutting people out and the different tools, the clone stamp tools, the quick selection tools, all of the separate mask features that come with Photoshop. Okay, you won't have them, but at least you'll have a basic photo package. And then when you your budget stretches to it, you can then invest in Adobe Photoshop. So, uh, please, uh, if you've got anything out of this tutorial, this well explanation, Give us a thumbs up, means so much, really appreciate it. If you have not already done so, click on the subscribe button and click on that little notifications button next to it so you don't miss a thing. And if you also, we've got a website, computertutoring.co.uk, and on our website you can find various uh, tips and tricks and tutorials. Uh, and we also conduct training courses, classroom-based training courses in all of those three programs, these three applications. We have software ready laptops. We're able to bring them to your place of place of work, set them up so you can have hands-on experience uh, with this instructor-led hands-on experience. So I'm Simon at Computer Tutoring. I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching.